Touch my soul, take my hand, I will never let go. Again, I'm DJ Cash from Z93. It's an honor and pleasure to be before you. Uh, you know, a lot of times we look at radio today as a way to probably win prizes or obviously to listen to your favorite song. But I stand before you and always say, uh, once upon a time, the radio was a source for information. And of course, it was supposed to be there to provide for the community we've kind of lost our way in that mm -hmm. to a degree and again that's one of the things I try to do on the radio and like uh, uh, Representative Wendell Gilliard was saying you know a lot of the times when I go before the radio and I speak the way I speak as I spoke with a uh, Smurf many of uh, the times in conversation I was like, I don't think they like me talking like that. You know, <laughs> you know when, you, when you listen to the music, you know, nowadays the radio station is not the same where you come with your record and we just play it. The, the industry has changed. It's a corporation now. But there's a, there's a few songs on the radio today that I personally, when I'm on the air, I'm listening to them, I'm like, <coughs> what the heck is this? What are we feeding into the community? Amen. And I said, well, it's the powers to be, you know, they really don't care. It's about dollars and cents. They really don't care. But I have a passion to do what I do. But I was told that you're fighting against our product that you're supposed to be selling. Just as if I'll stand before you and say, uh, McDonald's burgers are the greatest, but I don't eat it. That's, it's, you're not going to have a job that long. So I'm always concerned about that, but I don't worry about that Amen. because I said, you know, I, I've been attacked over the 20 years that I've been on the radio in Charleston, but for, for other reasons. It's just, you know, what, what's been unfortunately instilled with us since the beginning of time, hatred, jealousy, all of this, what have you. And none of that matters to me because I said, you know, there's a reason why I'm still on the radio and a lot of people has fell through the wayside. And I said, because one point in time I said, I don't understand this and I'm going to keep fighting and we're going back and forth. But, you know, a wise grandmother told me, she said, you know what, turn it over to the law. And as soon as I did that, it's amazing how all of these situations just parted ways to make a clear path for me. So where I stand before you yet again, 20 years later, still on the radio, because I feel I have a mission. And with the mission that I'm speaking to folks, even if they do try to shut me down, I know the Lord is going to provide a way and a means right. for me to speak. So with that being said, uh, I want to turn it back over to Pastor Dixon for a minute because he's going to introduce some folks. But, you know, a lot of times I say the only way for things to resonate in us, it has to almost be right in front of our face. Because a lot of time, outside of the turnout we have here, I've been to a lot of events where it's been a small turnout. And, you know, I said the reason, one of the main reasons why that is because it's not a concern it is because it's not affecting them right now. And until it directly affects you, that's when you really have that sense of being the one to be a part and get out there and speak about these things. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But we're going to continue to fight and turn these things over. And what I would like to do right now when I turn it over to Pastor Dixon, what you're going to hear is from people who've been victims and experienced through the loss of loved ones through homicides and stuff. Because sometimes those are the things that it'll take that will really resonate and really build that passion in us to really want to go out there and make a difference in our community. So at this time, I want to turn it back over to Pastor Dixon. Thank you. Thank you. 
Y'all hear me now? You yeah. hear me? Hear you. <laughs> um, before I go any further, I would like to, for everybody to know that um, this is only an inaugural event. This is not the last time you are going to hear from us or that you'll be called to sit in this kind of setting again. And we are fully expecting that each and every one of you will take what you hear today, be inspired by what you hear today, and go back to wherever you stay at and bring some folks to the next event. Okay? Briefly, let me tell you about the next event. One month from today, March 21st, right back here again. As they say back in the day, some of you old folks might remember it. Same bad time, same bad channel. We'll be right back here, but this time, though, we'll be here for what we're calling the Youth Speak Out. Listen and learn. And we ain't calling the youth here to listen to what old man Dixon got to say or what even Papa Smurf got to say. We're calling the youth here, Pookie Ray Ray and them too, not just the church folks or, 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 or the folks that, that, that got a good reputation at, at the school for being scholarly, but Pookie and Ray Ray and them from the block. We're asking them to come out so we can listen to them about their issues, right. about what they think it would take to turn their, their community around from their perspective, what we can do to help them out. Right. Yes. Right. Now for all us old folks in here think that that ain't the way to do it, the way we've been doing it ain't work. <laughs> so it's about time for change. It's about time, desperate times, called for desperate measures. And if you want to acknowledge it and believe it or not, these young folks, them young thugging and drugging folks out there on that block, they do have something to say. If you just listen to them, and we just might get a clue as to how to fix this problem. Yes. So we're going to be inviting them out. We're going to be asking for the men of the community to band together, two, three, maybe four, to go out into these sort of difficult areas in the community and talk to Pookie and Ray Ray and Nuck Nuck and them. <laughs> and to ask them about, hey, look, y'all want to give us a minute to come out and visit with us on the 21st and to talk about your issues. We're going to give y'all some hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff, too, if y'all come. <laughs> so that's just a, a plug for where we headed from there. After that, we're going to be looking at other resources and programs that we can do, adult GED classes yes. and satellite spots. Okay. Um, job programs, job training, yes. Yes. other educational opportunities, yes. criminal records, expungements, and pardoning seminars, okay? Things that's going to help this community to once again thrive and be the great community that it has been. Johns Island, Wad Malone, all of the Sea Islands. And we're going to make this thing so that it gets contagious and extends on throughout Charleston County, Berkeley County, and Dorchester County. So the rest of the state and those in the state house have to look down this way to the low country and say, what the heck going on down there? Them folk ain't taking it no more. Them folk ain't saying enough is enough and they're raising it up. And we're raising up scholars. And we're raising up young children that we'll be proud of. Because we stopped and we listened to them yep. along the way Amen. about what they think the problem is. Amen. Don't be surprised if they tell you the problem is you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Let me let me move on. Okay. How do we get here? One of the catalysts for us getting here, January seventeenth of this year. Something happened on this island on John's Island, I believe it was, that uh, sort of made folks stop and think there was a homicide. 
someone died, someone's child woke up that morning and didn't wake up that next morning. Someone who had the possibility of a lucrative life, a good life, was suddenly, because of the wrong choice, given the only option available, and that's incarceration for a long period of time. There's a pain that's associated with losing a loved one, no matter what the situation is, it is. But it, when it's so sudden, it's like the difference between a tornado and a hurricane. Some of y'all probably sat through Hurricane Hugo, right? So y'all know to start watching the tracking, right? As it's coming towards you, and you know really what to do ahead of time. You can prepare for that. You can get yourself ready for that. Oh, but that tornado something different. That tornado, you sitting on your porch one minute and there ain't no porch the next. There's no warning whatsoever. And it's total devastation. The same thing happens when we look at violent crime. When we look at how one person takes the life of another person randomly and indiscriminately. And the pain that comes from that sudden loss that will carry on. I've talked to the survivors. A pain that never goes away. It never goes away. January 17, 2015, is one of the sparks that brought us here today, that brought us together, that made us decide that maybe we all need to come together and change this thing around. Marvin Gaye said it years ago. Mother, mother, there's far too many of you crying. Brothers, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know, we got to find a way. Well, Mr. Middleton, Mr. Wright, Mr. Mack, was in the good yard, myself, we came together to try to find a way. And we're asking you all to find a way. But we feel that one of the ways that we will help you all to be motivated to find a way, if you get to actually hear and to somewhat feel that pain that happens when a loved one is suddenly taken away. So with that, I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Bertha Smalls Middleton, who's going to take the mic from here with the introductions. Thank you, Pastor Dixon. Um, the death of Dwayne Blake certainly brought, brought us together, um, and this is why we are here today. Uh, Joanne Hayes is here. Joanne is a member of the Blake family, and she's been asked to speak to us on behalf of that family. If there are any other family members, I see Joni in the back, um, neighbors, church members that want to come and stand with Joanne, please feel free to do that. Give her your support. Amen. For you, um, actually, from both sides. Uh, I'm like Representative Ilya said. I'm tired of going to funerals. Within the past two years, I've lost four people that are close to me through gun violence. With Dwayne was my first cousin. And the thing is, what do you say to the children? You can't say, are you okay? Because dad is gone. You know, you see them, the best you can do is give them a hug and say, I'll be here for you and mean it. The same thing with Labor and Ross. Second, third cousin. We grew up together. Cuppy and my daughter grew up together. They were just at Zumba the Saturday before it happened. What do you say? I did my crying again last night. It's hard because it's like, it's surreal. It is very surreal. <clears throat> On the other hand, 
I come before you, they call me a survivor. I come before you as an overcomer of domestic violence, twice. Some people say, well, how do you stand up here and say that? When I went through it the second time, 20 years apart, you don't know who you're gonna get. That's right. But when I made it through the second one, I kept praying, there was, there was a void in my life. I kept asking God, what is it? What is it? What's wrong with me? There's something missing. I started volunteering at my sister's house. Mm. I am now on the Survivors Council. What I do is I go out and I tell my story. I have to relive it. No, it's not easy. Because there are days when I go there, it's hard for me to come back. And I have to sit and talk to someone. My survival is real. What my family went through, I've had a gun to my head. The trigger just wasn't pulled. Okay? I've had the broken nose, the bruised rib, the detached retina. I live it every day. So my giving back is standing up and telling my story because it is real. And the problem with our community, the problem with our community, right. we don't want to talk about it. We think it's, we are ashamed of it. But you know what, it's real. I tell women, if they tell you they're gonna kill you, believe it. It's just a matter of time. Now the men are not all to blame. Some of you may not like this, but you know me, I'm gonna speak the truth. The men are not the all to blame. Women, we got to find ourselves. Stop picking up these sorry men. Stop carrying them. Because when you're their bread and butter, and you decide, okay, I'm no longer your bread and butter, that's when they get upset. Women, raise your boys to be men. Men, raise your boys. Okay? My first marriage, abusive. A lot of it my daughter did not see. I thank God for that. But the one thing that I did do, I never stopped allowing him to be in their lives. And right now, we're the best of friends from a distance. Because <laughs> I still don't trust him, okay? But we have to stand up and we have to acknowledge what is real. Amen. Start talking about it. Little girls, when I spoke at Garrett Academy, I told the little girls, it's not cute when he takes your cell phone and tries to tell you who you can or can't to right. talk to, and he's not even paying your bill. Right. It is not cute. Little girls, when he pushes you or slaps you and you don't report it, what you are doing is enabling him to grow up to be someone who will abuse another woman. At home. It's all around us. And again, normally what I do is I'll pass out a, a pamphlet. Tell the, if you see someone, a victim, for God's sake, don't say if I were you, because you're not me. Okay? Give them the number to my sister's house and just let them call. Tell them I'm here for you. Help them. Losing someone, again, you know, I'm thankful that I'm able to go to a funeral because that means I'm alive, but I'm tired. I'm, I'll be honest, five, six funerals within the past five weeks, y'all, you know, and my family, you know, that's some natural death, but it's like now I'm waiting, okay, we've had two weeks. I'm waiting for another one, I'll be honest with you. And it's sad, but it's truth. We have got to face the facts. We don't need anyone to kill our black men. That's right. We're doing it ourselves. Right. If we're not killing someone, we're going to jail. The other flip side, I work at the municipal court. Well, these are my co-workers. They may not recognize me, but I put your names in the system. 